Hey there, Rebel Yummers. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about a paper that just came out looking at non-invasive blood pressure monitoring versus invasive arterial blood pressure monitoring in critically ill adults. And so I put a poll out to my YouTube members and I say, you have a patient presenting with septic shock requiring increasing doses of norepinephrine to maintain a map of greater than 65 millimeters of mercury. Which of the following would you use to monitor blood pressure? A radial art line, a femoral art line, or a blood pressure cuff? And by far and away, the most common answer was radial arterial line. So the paper we're talking about is this one called Accuracy of Non-Invasive Blood Pressure Monitoring in Critically Ill Adults, published in the Journal of Intensive Care Medicine, 2024. PMID number is there for you if you want to pull it from PubMed. The clinical question these authors were trying to answer was, in critically ill adults in the ICU, is non-invasive blood pressure uh, monitoring, or NIBP is what they call it in the paper, similar to invasive arterial blood pressure, which they labeled as IABP monitoring. And basically the difference they were looking for is, is it within 10% of each other? So what they did was a single center retrospective observational trial of critically ill adults in the ICU. And they did simultaneous invasive arterial blood pressure monitoring, and they compared that to non-invasive blood pressure monitoring. Their primary outcome, as we've already stated, was agreement of the mean arterial pressure between the invasive arterial blood pressure versus the non-invasive blood pressure, and they were looking for a less than or equal to 10% difference between these two. So their population was about 1,850 critically ill adults. We look at where the arterial lines were located, 81% were radial, 11% were femoral, and 8% were in other locations. They ended up getting over 52,000 simultaneous invasive arterial blood pressure readings and non-invasive blood pressure measurements, which gives us about a median of 13 paired measurements per patient. Now, the primary result uh, when we look at the blood pressure for the invasive arterial blood pressure was 77 millimeters of mercury. For the non-invasive blood pressure was 84 millimeters of mercury. The mean difference between the two was 6 millimeters of mercury. And 67% or two-thirds of the readings of those paired readings were in agreement, which means one-third were not. Now, when they looked to see the ones that there was a discrepancy between non-invasive and invasive uh, MAP reading, there was five independent predictors of measurement discrepancy. If a patient was requiring increasing doses of norepinephrine, the patient had a lower mean arterial pressure, the patient had a higher uh, body mass index, older patients, and then radial arterial lines actually had more of a discrepancy compared to non-invasive blood pressure readings. Now, there's some huge limitations to this study um, because I've seen a ton of this on social media about people um, advocating for not putting arterial lines in these critically ill patients. So first of all, I would say there was almost no cardiac patients. They were very limited. And so these results cannot be extrapolated to that population of patients. There was really no protocol that was followed for whether you checked a non-invasive and compared it to an uh, invasive arterial blood pressure. And so patients who probably had more discrepant readings were the ones that were getting more non-invasive blood pressure checks, uh, at least more frequently. Some patients were on multiple pressors, but for whatever reason, the authors only evaluated norepinephrine dose, but they didn't tell us much about the other vasopressors that the patients were on. The median systolic blood pressure in this study was about 110 to 120 millimeters of mercury. And so how sick were these patients? And we already said one of the things that causes more discrepancy were the patients that were more hypotensive. And so if we're only matching two thirds of our readings between non-invasive and invasive at a blood pressure of 110 to 120, how uh, discrepant is it going to be as we get to lower and lower blood pressures? And then finally, MAP discrepancy is not patient-oriented outcome because we have no idea how this impacted morbidity and mortality, how it impacted, uh, impacted bedside clinical practice. So 
let's get into the discussion of this paper. So two thirds of the patients had significant agreement um, with their non-invasive blood pressure reading and their invasive arterial blood pressure measurements. And the median difference was a map of about six millimeters of mercury. The things that seem to predict discrepancy. And so this is where I would say I will not be using non-invasive blood pressure monitoring were things that were basically associated with either increasing severity of illness or there was some physiologic reason that non-invasive and invasive were having huge discrepancies. So patients who are requiring higher doses of norepinephrine or any vasopressor for that matter is not a patient I'm going to be depending on non-invasive blood pressure monitoring. Patients who have lower MAPs, which was not the entire population that was included here, I'm also not going to depend on that because this study also showed there's huge discrepancy there. My patients that have a higher body mass index, obviously non-invasive blood pressure monitoring is not going to be as accurate. And in those patients, um, an arterial line is going to be very much needed. Increasing patient age, most likely because of plaque formation and calcium deposits in the arteries, uh, you might get some false high readings uh, with your non-invasive and you're going to get more accurate readings with your arterial line. And then the radial arterial line location was an interesting finding. And basically when they compare that to like a femoral arterial line, they found more discrepancy. And their thought was is that these radial A lines have a smaller diameter than femoral A lines. And that's why they had more discrepancy with the radials than they did with the femorals. Now, the final thing I'll say is that the premise of this study is to look at blood pressure monitoring, but for those of us who are up in the ICU or even down in the ED, we use A-lines for way more than just blood pressure monitoring. We use it for ABGs, we use it for continuous blood pressure monitoring, and we use it for monitoring rapid changes in clinical status. It's how we titrate our drips, vasopressors, inotropes, uh, blood pressure medications, whatever it is that we're using. And so I don't think a non-invasive blood pressure cuff is going to be accurate enough for me in these patients that are requiring these types of medications. The clinical take-home point of this study is while two-thirds of the patients have no discrepancies in blood pressure monitoring, one-third do. And that's a lot. That's one in three um, of critically ill patients. And so this paper is not going to change my practice to stop putting A-lines in people. Sicker patients, the ones with escalating doses of norepinephrine or the ones that have lower MAPs who are basically more shocky, patients who have higher uh, BMIs, and the elderly seem to have more discrepancy. And so those are populations where I would certainly not depend on non-invasive blood pressure monitoring. And although I understand there are risks with arterial lines, there's other reasons to have A-lines in place in critically ill patients. Mechanical ventilation and weaning vents, I'm going to need ABGs for that. Uh, drip titrations, or uh, especially early in resuscitation of a patient where I haven't quite gotten to that maintenance phase of resuscitation, I'm going to want second by second blood pressure monitoring. So there you go. This was non-invasive blood pressure monitoring versus invasive arterial blood pressure monitoring in critically ill adults. And what I've seen on social media is that we can use non-invasive blood pressure monitoring, but for all the reasons I already stated in this review, this does not change my practice. And if a patient is critically ill, I'm still going to go with invasive arterial blood pressure monitoring. Let me know your thoughts, comments, and questions. Appreciate you guys tuning in. And until next time.